on service to find them, on service to bring them all. Google released the OG Chromecast back in 2013 with only iterative updates since. Chromecast with Google TV is the biggest update since the original, which for simplicity's sake, I'll refer to as Google TV, which dropped in September of 2020. The downfall of cable services and their packaged nonsense and the rise of streaming, finding a show to watch has become simpler than ever. That is until companies noticed Netflix swimming in its giant money vault and decided they wanted in. The dream of having all your shows on one app died that day with Disney, Paramount, Amazon, HBO, Hulu, Binge, Stan, and many more depending on region, all getting in on the action. We've now return to the package days of old, but instead with apps. So Google TV to the rescue? If Google can organize YouTube, surely they can organize streaming services. Chromecast with Google TV connects via HDMI like any other Chromecast. It's a rounded plastic dongle that follows Google's current styling aesthetics with three colors to choose from, but realistically, you're just choosing the color of your remote as you won't see that dongle again. For anyone coming from the older Chromecast device, this might take some getting used to, as the previous casting experience was always fairly spartan, but while simple, it was efficient. I was initially pretty skeptical about the usefulness of a remote, as I'd been trained that my phone being the remote is the way of the year 3000, but I was pretty quickly won over. Now, for context, my TV is an Aussie budget branded Sonic paired with a Samsung sound system. I resisted the typical universal remote as the convenience of only combining two devices didn't seem worth the expense. Google did me a solid and just combined these on the one remote anyway which is able to power up the Chromecast and the TV with the power button and change the volume on the sound system with the volume buttons. This will be subject to device support. My not exactly obscure TV, at least not in Australia, wasn't initially supported, but has since been added. Overall, the remote is simple and well-designed. The dedicated YouTube button works well for me, but I haven't gotten as much use out of the Netflix button it can be remapped with a third party app if need be, at least until the next season of The Witcher comes out. The Google Assistant button is surprisingly useful. I previously moved away from smart TVs and into Chromecasts due to how completely inconvenient they are when any typing is required. Having it built directly into the remote really makes life easy. Being able to find particular shows no matter what service they're on and letting you input text with your voice. Mileage may vary depending on how well Google Assistant does in your region, of course. With the remote being such a source of convenience though, like any remote, just be sure you don't misplace it. As mine played hide and seek down the side of the couch for a few weeks. And what a painful few weeks that was. You can of course still cast without it, and the remote app has recently been integrated into Android. But it's far from convenient and tends to disconnect after a brief window of inactivity. So instead of a quick press to pause or change a video, it becomes opening the app, waiting for it to reconnect, and then perform your action. This also comes into play if Google TV hangs and gets stuck loading a random screen. With the physical remote, you could fix this by backing out, but frequently the digital remote would also hang and fail to connect in these situations, leaving your popcorn to get cold. So. Bottom line, don't lose the remote. Software wise, this is really just Android. So as expected, apps. App availability looks reasonable with most of my streaming services and local channels covered. Nebula was my only service not available, but CuriosityStream was. Being locally stored apps instead of needing to download the interface on each cast really sets things apart from previous Chromecasts. This allows the app to buffer more content for reactive fast forwarding or rewinding, letting you quickly skip intros or scary parts. Comparatively, a regular Chromecast would need to reload after each jump, making any changes more hassle than they're worth. Apps also allow for logging into a service once and then not worrying about it. 
helpful for those that follow the sharing is caring approach and can never quite remember what your mother's, brother's, cousin's, stepdog's usual password is. One of my more commonly used apps is of course YouTube. And while browsing for videos is a relatively similar affair, I noticed pretty quickly that you can't queue up videos on Google TV like you can on the old casting interface. Instead, leaning more on suggestions and autoplay annoyances. It also seems to nix the ability to check video descriptions and comments. Also, while a rather specific situation, if you're ever sick of your last YouTube video autoplaying as soon as you connect to your car's Bluetooth, using Google TV will alleviate this as it gets it off your phone. The other app that gets a lot of use for me is Plex. As mentioned before, not needing to download the app each time, like on an older Chromecast, means that even in times of no internet, I'm still able to stream from my local server. Remember that Australia currently ranks 56th average speed between Estonia and Serbia. I have run into weird freezing issues on the Plex app that don't appear while casting, but the other conveniences still offset this. Google Photos is also integrated, allowing you to set up a custom album as a screensaver. So naturally, And as mentioned before, the Chromecast with Google TV can, of course, cast. It was a bit inconsistent though, and didn't act exactly like previous models. For some apps like Netflix, it acts more like a smart TV connection. Just launching the app on the TV and ignoring all expected casting accounts and conventions. Other casted apps seem to work generally as expected though, but the connection from the phone to the Chromecast did seem to time out much faster than usual. So when returning to pause or change the volume, it had already disconnected. On the subject of apps, something you might not consider is games. While the app menu recommended I try to install Knights of the Old Republic, I was quickly reminded that there wasn't actually enough storage for that and probably not enough grunt either. One option though is the ever versatile Steam Link, which I was able to install, connect a Bluetooth controller and after a tweak to some settings, play some PC games. The usual issues with Steam Link are included, of course, like streaming speeds, response rate, and usually wanting to play PC games on an actual PC. But it was a nice novelty and could work with the right games. Recommendations are the final piece of the Google Key Lime Pie and are done in a way that is pretty similar to how other streaming services do it. Because of that, it tends to be somewhat mentally filtered out, kind of like ads. I blame Netflix for being too annoying with it. The upside though, is that as Google is recommending content across all streaming services, it's often less expected, and you do get nice prompts that make you at least consider, as long as it's not trying to throw reality TV down your throat. It at least doesn't just tell you what Netflix originals everyone else is watching. An unfortunate downside though is it doesn't seem to limit recommendations just to installed services and will frequently recommend things I have little interest in from the local channels. I could create a free account, but I just don't want to watch the aforementioned trashy reality TV. And in typical Google fashion, there's also spruiking of their own services. I've often liked the look of a recommended show only to find it's not on any of my streaming services, needing to be rented separately from Google Play. So while recommendations can be a sour point, there is opportunity for improvement at least, with the ability to select whether a listed show was liked, disliked, or already watched. This does carry over to your account on multiple devices too. So if you want to put effort in, you can. It also should be noted that apps and the continue watching section don't automatically sync across accounts. Launching a particular service will update its continue watching list, but not all apps support this feature and it seems to require developer implementation. So don't be surprised when some of the smaller apps don't feature it. So after all that, is the Chromecast with Google TV actually a convenient service? Even though I don't use it to its fullest, often fighting against recommendations, it still provides value in ways I didn't initially expect. The occasional recommendations feel more meaningful and intentional 
as it's not just trying to push content Netflix or Disney want. The locally stored apps add speed and reliability, and the remote adds simplicity and efficiency. So the Chromecast with Google TV is definitely a good addition to any household, looking for that extra bit of convenience at a reasonable price. I'd recommend it to anyone who feels as I do with the longing for order in the maelstrom of craziness that streaming services have become. And while it's definitely not perfect, I have seen firsthand the platform improve over the past year and I hope to see what it can become in the future. Just don't misplace your remote. What content are you most looking forward to streaming in the future? Comment on the comments and I'll catch you in the next.